this topic of evil and um, what it is and where it is and how to identify it and what to do about it and does it exist, doesn't it exist, is it, doesn't it exist or where is it in the world um, is something that um, is occupying uh, the collective uh, tremendously throughout our world today because of all the violence that we see in the news, uh, acts of terrorism, uh, acts of war of all kinds, plus criminality and all these various topics that we're going to discuss in this series. So it's very much on our minds. And um, uh, in this series, we're going to try to address various facets and features of this uh, uh, very much discussed current and topical issue. Um, we see that violence and terror dominate the news almost uh, to the exclusion of everything else. It's very unusual to see stories that are positive and upbeat in the world today. In other words, evidence of good in the world. We see much more evidence of uh, violence and uh, destructiveness and threat. And this, of course, um, can be thought of uh, uh, or questioned, is this an eruption uh, of the shadow and evil uh, in our world? Uh, a, a kind of undercurrent that has always been there, now popping up and erupting, now in Paris, now in London, now in New York, now in the Middle East, now wherever in our homes and in our own neighborhoods. Um, is this an eruption of the shadow of collective consciousness, uh, both in projection and in reality? And we're going to want to talk about the difference between the projection of evil and, and the shadow and shadow figures and symbols and so on, the projection uh, factor and the reality factor. And how do we separate them? And how do we come to grips with reality and try to diminish the uh, effects of projection that might interfere with our grasp on reality? Now, I just uh, I did remember and looked up a, a couple of references uh, concerning the rhetoric of evil in politics. And um, I think uh, uh, in, in uh, modern times, in recent times, uh, one of the first uh, notable examples of that was in a speech that Ronald Reagan gave, President Reagan, in 1983, and it's known as the Evil Empire speech. Uh, this was a speech given to a group, or originally to a group of fundamentalist Christians, uh, an evangelical group in uh, Florida, in which he referred to the Soviet Union as the evil empire. And this uh, phrase was picked up in, in the media, of course, and used uh, a great deal to, to um, indicate uh, President Reagan's um, a moral evaluation of what was going on in communism and in the Soviet Union at that time. Um, and of course, it was very upsetting to the other side to be labeled evil. Now, nobody wants to be evil or known as evil. Everybody wants to be good. And the other guy is the evil one. And um, uh, President Reagan uh, was famous for splitting the world into good and evil. And of course, America was good and the Soviet Union and uh, the communist world was evil. But this terminology is a very moralistic terminology. Uh, it's almost medieval uh, to speak of um, an evil empire or science fiction, something like that. But it was used in politics, brought into politics by Reagan. And um, since then, I think the, uh, the rhetoric uh, of evil in politics has continued. And um, finally, the sixth stage of consciousness uh, that um, Jung implies, writes about in his late writings, we can call it the unus mundus, uh, world of synchronicity, again, one world, a kind of recapitulation of the first level, participation mystique world, but at the level of consciousness now, much more conscious and even philosophical. 
And this is a sense that these uh, inner figures uh, that Jung called archetypes, and archetypal images, um, are not only psychic and human, but also mimic or reflect or um, uh, correspond to structures of reality that are beyond the psyche and beyond the human world, that really are ontological, ontologically grounded. And in that case, if that's true, what would good and evil be in that world, in that unus mundus? Can we speak about reality as a composite of constructive and destructive powers and forces, and that our experience of good and evil are a kind of echo of that, or a recapitulation on a human psychological level. So um, those are some fundamental considerations that we'll want to keep in mind as we uh, go into this very deep subject of the problem of evil. Throughout the book of Genesis, you have this theme of the one who's privileged and the one who isn't, the one who's chosen and the one who isn't, the, the, uh, 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 the struggles for um, inheritance, and, um, um, and it all comes out of this uh, mysterious unpredictability of human love and endearment. We simply love some of our children more than others. We try not to, we try to be equal, but that seems to come across. And out of this, uh, you have the narcissistic rage uh, that overwhelms um, uh, Cain. And this is the source of pathological violence. Narcissistic rage, which is born out of deep a sense of rejection and uh, not being accepted, not being as good as, not being as loved as. And this you get uh, in many accounts of why people turn violent, why they commit murder, why they become radicalized in our world today. It's out of this feeling of not being among the privileged, not being accepted, not being chosen, being in a country that's hostile and uh, privileges others. And so this narcissistic rage, we could say, is the source of pathological violence. This is a quote from Heinz Kohut about narcissistic rage belongs to the large psychological field of aggression, anger, and destructiveness, and occurs in many forms. They all share, however, a specific psychological flavor, which gives them a distinct position within the wide realm of human aggression. This is all about evil now. The need for revenge, for righting a wrong, for undoing a hurt by whatever means, this need for revenge, righting a wrong. I mean, and uh, we see this in often in the victims of, of violence as well, for undoing a hurt by whatever means, an early life trauma and so on, and a deeply anchored, unrelenting compulsion in the pursuit of all these aims, which gives no rest to those who have suffered a narcissistic injury. These are the characteristic features of narcissistic rage in all its forms and which sets it apart from other kinds of aggression. And we could say this is the source of pathological violence and one of the deepest, darkest forms of uh, what we react to with the term evil.